very much for inviting me to the conference today. Um, I'm going to kind of quickly go through uh, a bit about um, the work that I've been working on over the last nine months. Uh, no, actually, 11 months. So, um, the Comunier 3 in the Western Isles is a, a group of historical societies that I have been working with. Some of them more closely than others. Um, there's 21 altogether and they cover uh, 130 miles of land uh, and sea. So uh, as you can see at the bottom here, we've got a map of Lewis and Harris and the local common Erthries and their kind of remits of area and the same with the US Zambara on the other side. Most of them have a remit to collect local um, archives, photographs, oral histories, artefacts, genealogies. Many of them have their own buildings now. Um, most of them are based in old schools that have been bought over or gifted to the community. So a lot of them are working now in terms of collecting and making the most of what they've got. And uh, a lot of that has ended up in my remit. So I am a heritage apprentice, albeit that I am probably what, uh, probably the oldest uh, <laughs> apprentice you'll have probably come across. Um, there are three of us employed, employed with the council at the moment as heritage apprentices, covering Lewis and Harris, um, although because I'm from South Uist, I do go down to Uist and Barra to try and cover that area as well, when I can. Um, we get on the job training, uh, learning as we go along. Um, we do get half a day with the local archivist and the, the council archivist. And uh, I'm also studying for my degree on top of everything else. And just recently just started a part-time post with the council as collections assistant for the local authority archive. So we're pretty busy. Um, but we're also involved in various different projects and some of the which I'll explain more about. So a bit about my background. I changed from a media background. I was uh, in television and radio for BBC for years and then I was doing a lot of Gaelic work as I'm a Gaelic speaker so I was doing a lot of Gaelic communications officer work previous to me transferring to the, the Scottish Council and Archives Skills for the Future traineeship, which is how I met Audrey. And I did that for a year and four months before I transferred to what the only opportunity for me uh, to continue in heritage, which was the heritage apprenticeship. Um, and it also allowed me to also study the BA in culture and heritage at the same time. So these are some of the um, projects that I've been working on in the last 11, 11 months. And uh, the photo behind there is actually of my local village at home in Uist. My house is over there somewhere. Um, but these projects here um, are just a, a, it's, I won't go into detail into each every single one of these projects, but um, the main one that I've been working on is GLIB, the legacy, which I will talk about. The Kinloch Historical Society, we've been working quite closely with them. The Tung Community Hall, which is, again, completely not considered a heritage group, but have heritage as part of their remit. Um, Park as well, and then the private collections, and then some of the stuff that we're going to be working on over the next year. So GLIB means a legacy. And the project was an intergenerational project and it is covering the whole of the Western Isles. It has four key themes for Lewis, Harris, Uist and Barra. The Isle tragedy for Lewis was main, is their main theme, which was the ship, the SS Isle the yacht, HMY, should I say, uh, which sunk off the Beasts of Home in January 20 in 1919, 
We'll be celebrating the 100th anniversary this year. We've had a lot of events this year commemorating the tragedy. Amongst them has been the GILA project, which I will explain more about. For Harris, it's been protest in politics, so that's all about land issues and land struggles, land raiders, um, and also what led on after that. The war experience for US, and then immigration for Barra. Now, as we started going into the themes, everything we noticed had a connection. So without the war experience, the ILA wouldn't have happened. Without the, ILA, without the war experience, the protests and politics wouldn't have happened. And without that, the immigration wouldn't have happened. So they were all interlinked. So my project that I've been working on for the last wee while has been about um, what I've been calling object, ob object and <laughs> cowless brawn, which is the objects of loss and tragedy. As we were doing the research for this project, a lot of the, pro the stories that we were finding were about a particular object that families had in their own homes uh, that were connected to somebody on the Isle of um, And some of them, they were just random, everyday objects. There's a clock, there's a teapot, there's a cu cup and saucer, and there's a ring. I'll just tell you two stories out of the whole uh, project. There is more, but this is the the ring project, the ring um, object. The ring is belonged to uh, Catherine Morrison from Tank Hall. Now her husband John, who's in the photograph here, he was lost on the Isle of and the family. Um, after the mother died, had the ring, her wedding ring, um, the heart in, in added to it with the, the inscription mother on it. And the family have had this for, um, obviously I've kept this in the family and one of the granddaughters has the, the ring now. So this is Catherine or Kate and as you can see She's aged quite a bit, because that's the previous photo. And that's her after what happened. When, after the Iron Lair sunk, there was a lot of poverty. And a lot of the families needed help. They required funding and money. So the Isle Air Disaster Fund was set up in order to help these families. And we had been working with the local archive where uh, researching for our project, but also um, for the main Isle Air exhibition at the same time. So we were going through the Isle Air Disaster Fund um, forms to see what connections we could find. So we found out quite a lot about um, Catherine Morrison and as you will see um, she had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight children to look after once her husband died which is a rather large family um, and she applied to um, the Isle Air Disaster Fund for help and this is one of the letters that she wrote to the Disaster Fund. Sir, I beg you to apply for a grant from the Isle Air Disaster Fund. My husband, John Morrison, was drowned in the Isle Air Disaster. He was at the time in the Royal Naval Reserve. Before the war, he was a fisherman. My family numbers nine persons, including myself. Their ages, ages really from 18 years to one year. I myself have been under medical treatment by Dr. Mackenzie for the last three years and for the last eight months have been practically confined to the bed. I can thus, I am thus unable to do anything, any housework. So the effect of what had happened with the ILA obviously affected the family greatly. There is a more maybe happier ending in that 
their daughter Catherine Isabella Morrison. Um, she was able to apply to the fund in in later in the 1920s to get funding for training. So she went off to become a, a children's nurse. And a note in the minutes of the Isle Air Disaster Fund is a copy of a letter that Catherine had written um, expressing her appreciation for the, the grant assistance that she got given by the, the Isle Air Disaster Fund. Now this is a great story, although sad as well. Um, it's about a teapot that was never used. The teapot belonged to Catherine MacDonald from Lower Babel, which is another small village in, in Lewis. And her three sons, Donald, William and Alistair, were all in the First World War, but only one survived. She had bought the teapot in the hope that one day when her sons came back after the war, that she would use the teapot. But because her sons never came back, she never used the teapot. But it's still within the family, and it's never been used to this day. And it's a beautiful teapot, and uh, the person who has it now is this, this happy chap at the end, Donald William MacDonald. Uh, he, it was his gran, grandmother who owned the teapot. But when I went to speak to him, I got something else. And uh, we got given this postcard. And I think it really hit home when you might be able to read it. But the, on the front of the postcard is this poem that's at the end here. And it was written by his um, uncle, William. And it just says, Great haired and silent upon the quay, there is a mother lone. Never again to heart, heart came he, though the long years have flown. Sound he sleeps in the trackless main, tides have ebbed and reflowed again. But still she smiles because she knows she'll meet him when the life ebb tide flows. And William was one of the one was the one that was lost in the Isle Air. So it was a really touching moment to have come across this postcard that he had sent to somebody else that had been given to the the family. But apart from the ILA and the GILA project that we've been working on, I've also been working with other local historical societies. And as an apprentice, we've ended up um, bridging the gap in skills um, between the volunteers who haven't had much experience in dealing with uh, objects and archives. We've ended up having to give them a hand with certain projects. So when Kinloch decided that they were going to um, renovate their museum, our job was to wrap and pack their objects. As you can see, this is what we're doing here. Um, but we've also had a two-way thing. They've taken us to Fort George so that we could see what objects and things they had there. We also worked together on this World First World War and Western Isles event. And a, a, a picture of the two apprentices with, that are with me as well, down at the bottom. So we've had quite a lot of um, collaboration as well. The Tongue Community Hall project was a good, an interesting one because they're not considered a heritage group at all. But they approached us to help them preserve some of their photographs. That they've, they have a massive collection of over 400 photographs that they just had blue tacked to the wall of the hall. So the first um, job we had was to, to catalogue them all and preserve them in uh, melanic sleeves and put them into a catalogue. And this is just a selection of a couple of the ones that we thought were quite interesting. Um, fundraising for the for the actual hall, the first Tongue Highland Games in the 1970s, which is um, uh, one of their main uh, income streams. And then at the end, there's uh, Ben Fogel visited. So uh, they've got some really interesting collections. But one of the other things that we've ended up is um, we found quite a lot of people who don't want to work with community 
based projects. And um, this is a, a kind of a, one of who, somebody who approached us again who wanted to, to uh, talk about her auntie. And this was about Anna MacLeod. And um, she was a wren, I think. <laughs> and uh, she was in World War Two down in Great Yarmouth and actually died in a bombing there. So what the family have left is the organizer that's up in the, the red organizer up in the top right there. And um, when we went through it, um, we found greetings cards, Christmas card, and her last letter that she wrote home. So there's photographs as well that she kept all in that organizer. It was um, quite touching um, to, for somebody, she hadn't looked at this organizer for years and then she'd suddenly decided she needed to do something with it and then brought it to us and we, we, we took photos of it and then are planning to use it in a, in a future exhibition. So this brings me to what we're going to be kind of doing in the next wee while. Um, a lot of the research that we've gathered over the last year is going to end up in exhibitions of some kind. We've already been involved in the ILA exhibition that's currently in display at a museum in the line up in Lewis Castle in Stornoway. Um, the next is taking the, the objects of loss and tragedy one step further and making it into a proper um, exhibition. And then we're hoping to have a peace celebration in 2019, which will follow or replicate the one that was um, uh, in back in 1919 on the 4th of August. Um, and there was a bicycle parade, there was an open air service, there was a smokers concert, there was um, fireworks and illuminations and they also made uh, the households buy a candle from a particular shop to put in the window uh, and light up. Um, but the other, there's other things. We also did a history of seaweed exhibition um, for the town hall which is also going to get um, reused again in Kinloch Historical Society. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know everyone will probably have lots of questions about my apprenticeship and how it's come about. Um, but if you want to find out more about the work that I've been working on and anything else in terms of community archives and how we've helped other organisations, then I'm more than happy to hang around a wee bit later and, and chat to you. That's it. Mm -hmm.